Hello, I trust that you're doing well. Welcome to Miss Fountain channel, your go-to destination for insightful and engaging educational content. Here, we explore a wide range of topics from science and history to technology and beyond. Prepare to expand your knowledge and spark your curiosity with our carefully crafted videos. Subscribe now and join us on our journey of discovery. In today's session, we're going to look at agents and risks. That is in under biosafety and bioethics. In a previous video, we we introduced biosafety where we looked at uh, the principles of biosafety. The link to that video is in the description as well as uh, pinned on the first comment. Agents create risks. I'm going to begin with uh, looking at assessing a risk. Under assessing a risk, a risk must be identified. Also, the risk must be evaluated. It must be measured and there should be a plan to minimize the risk. And uh, you might be wondering who determines an acceptable risk. We find that the assessment of a risk is conducted by a biosafety professional uh, in partnership with or uh, based on information provided by the principal investigator that is the PI and the assessment is presented to the institutional biosafety committee that is IBC and the reason behind that is for approval Going to look at uh, identifying risk, and under this subtopic, we find that uh, for one, for it to be identified as a risk, it should or several things must have happened, and these include understand the biology of the agent, also the the susceptibility the successibility and transmission within the host the, ha the hazards that are associated with equipment and procedures it's important to note that uh, the goal is to provide the highest practical protection and the lowest practical exposure evaluating a risk uh, acceptability uh, here we include all things that are included they have uh, the worst case scenario that is what might happen the likelihood of an event the seriousness of the event or the incident actions that are needed to resolve the problems I'm going to look at a uh, risk assessment and a risk assessment several things are considered and these are some of them uh, you might want to ask yourself what is the organism is it wild type attenuated irradiated or even uh, chemically treated what is the maximum concentration the volume or the infectious dose what's the workspace like yeah, what are the aerosolizing procedures and how do they contain the aerosols are personnel trained do they understand the organism infectious dose and symptoms what are the experimental procedures will will they be transporting the material are they doing tissue culture do they have adequate uh, containment equipment it is uh, those are some of the questions that are, that seek to be answered under risk assessment we are briefly going to look at uh, risk groups and these risk groups are important because they are used in risk assessment we have four risk groups that is risk group one risk group two risk group three and four 
and uh, risk group one we find that uh, in these uh, it's unlikely well, the agents in these are unlikely to cause disease in humans or even animals there is low individual and low community risk under risk group two uh, the agents may cause diseases but these diseases are typically not serious there is a low individual risk and low community risk and the diseases that arise from these are untreatable that is uh, in risk group two when it comes to risk group three may cause serious diseases which are usually treatable there is high individual but low community risk so the individual risk is high but the community risk is low there could be serious respiratory agents uh, and examples of this in risk group two okay we, we didn't give an example in risk in risk group two an example of such an agent is a human or even primate cells there could also be patient samples that is in risk group two under risk group three well we've said uh, that the agents may cause serious disease, serious disease which are usually treatable there is high individual risk but low community risk there could also be the be serious respiratory agents and uh, examples of such agents in risk group three is a uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis i'm going to look at risk group four uh, this is a uh, they're serious and the diseases are rising from this or the agents in risk group four the diseases are not treatable there is easy transmission there is high individual risk as well as a uh, high community risk an example of this is the ebola and the marburg virus those are the risks that are in Oh, I mean those are the agents that are in risk group 4. That is the end of our brief session. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've uh, gained valuable insights and knowledge from today's video. Don't forget to subscribe for more enlightening content. Remember, learning never stops. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.